Audacity is the best free software for audio recording and editing for beginners. Audacity is easy to learn and has almost all the necessary features for complex audio editing tasks. I will mainly focus on how to record and edit audio with Audacity in a beginner-friendly way. If you do not have Audacity installed on your machine, go to audacityteam.org. You can choose your OS from the download menu or click the download Audacity on the homepage. It will detect your OS and will start downloading the file automatically. If the automatic download does not start, you will find the link to download. I am skipping the installation process as it is as easy as with any other software for your OS. You will see this welcome screen when you open Audacity for the first time. You can watch this video which talks about the changes in this version but may not be that useful for complete beginners. You will also find some links to the online manual and forum here. These are helpful resources who want to take their Audacity knowledge to a professional level. Check this box if you do not wish this welcome screen on the startup next time. Audacity can be used both for recording new audio or editing existing audio. First I will show you how to record using Audacity. If you press the red record button, then the recording will start. You can also see the keyboard shortcut R while you mouse over the record button. Though the recording is this simple, you must take care of some setups. First, you have to set the microphone for recording. From the audio setup, you can select some options. You do not need to worry about the host. The playback device is the output device in which you will listen after recording. Set your recording device by choosing from these options. Click on it and it will be selected as the recording device. I have a Samson Pro USB mic attached, so I will use that one. You can choose the recording channel as mono or stereo. Though my Samson mic only gives the mono recording option. If I choose another mic, I will get both mono and stereo option. For voiceover, mono is fine, but if you need stereo sound, for example in music, you can set the stereo recording channel this way. I will switch back to my Samson mic. Sometimes you may face an issue of your recording device not showing up. This happens when you have started Audacity and then attached the recording device to your computer. To solve this issue, go to Transport Rescan Audio Devices. Samson's mic is now appearing. All these options are combined in the audio settings. You can see all those options and latency settings in this pop-up. If you need to know further about this, you can click the help icon. Whenever you find this help icon, it will take you to the details manual page, a good place for advanced learning. We will learn mainly about beginner's concepts of recording and editing, so let's get back to Audacity. My device settings are okay, I will now move to adjust the recording volume. In the recording meter, you will see a volume slider. You can adjust the recording volume by moving the slider. Double-clicking on that will show the volume. Correct volume level during recording is very important. You should aim for something between minus 18 to minus 12 in this meter. It is possible to monitor the recording level without recording actually. Click on the microphone icon and start monitoring. You will see the current volume level in green color. You can adjust your distance from the microphone or talking direction to achieve the correct level. You should aim from minus 18 to minus 12 most of the time. If you do not wish to have much post-processing you can go up to minus 6, but never more than that. Otherwise, you run the risk of clipping the audio. After setting the recording volume, you have to set a project rate. However, I will not change the project rate, but it is essential to discuss. With a higher project rate, more details of the audio are sampled. This is something to do with analog to digital conversion. Audio in the microphone is recorded as an analog signal and converted to digital form on the computer. With a higher project rate, more details of the signal are stored. So you may think, why not move to a higher project rate? Because those details are so small that our regular devices cannot output them. Your regular headphones or regular sound card cannot process it. You will not hear any difference in your voice which is recorded at 44,100 Hz. All the fantastic pieces of music you listen to are sampled either in 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. 
All this discussion means you do not need to get a higher project rate unless you know exactly why. Otherwise, it would be a waste of disk space as higher project increase the file size. I have discussed this in detail so that you know when you are not getting a quality recording, it is not the issue with the project rate. It is an issue with your recording environment and recording device. I will put some links in the description on how to fix the recording environment. As all the settings are in place, let's record something. You can either press R or click the red button to start recording. It is always a good idea to record some part at the beginning where you are not talking. Only the surrounding noise will be there, which is a good thing to edit later. The recording meter is hitting at minus 18, which is okay. The thing that is progressing as I record is called the timeline. You will edit the audio in the timeline. The blue things are called waveforms, and you get an idea of how loud a sound is from the waveform shape. If I take the recording volume slider to the lowest point, you will see nothing in the waveform. For my situation, the highest point works better. To stop recording, click the stop button. So I have recorded my first track. After recording, you should save the project. It is a good practice to save time to time so that you do not lose your work. From the file menu, click Save Project. Notice this is an op 3 file which is not a typical audio file. You cannot share this file as an audio file or use it in a project. op 3 can be opened only in Audacity. Select a location to save the project and give it a name. I will close it and open the project again to show the open project feature. From my applications, I will open Audacity. It is blank, but you can reopen the latest projects from the file menu. Another option is to open the project from the location. I kept the project inside the Audacity Projects folder. This is my saved op3 file and I can open it to get the last saved file. So I got the audio one track as it was before in my project. After recording the audio, what would be the next step? Well, the next thing you might want to do is to share this audio somewhere. Maybe for your YouTube video, podcast, or voiceover, in short, you want to get a playable audio file from this. Before proceeding with that, let's hear it a bit. To play an audio file, click on the timeline to the place to start and press the spacebar. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. It has some advanced features, it has some very advanced features, but when you are new to audio editing... Well, before sharing this record, we have to fix or improve something. The volume level of the audio is not good enough, and there is some white noise in the audio. These are common issues you need to improve in most audio recordings. Those improvements have to be done through the timeline. When you play a piece of audio in the timeline, this vertical line with a green triangle above is called the playhead. It moves to the place of currently playing audio. The numbers marked at the top of the timeline are seconds, you can see the audio shape at a particular time. You can zoom in or out of the timeline through the scroll up and down while the cursor is inside the track. These functions are also available through the buttons here. You can zoom in or zoom out or zoom toggle. When you take your mouse over those buttons, you will see tooltips and keyboard shortcuts. So you do not have to remember what each button does. Another set of important buttons is these tool buttons. The default tool is the selection tool denoted by I here. Besides the selection tool, you will see the envelope tool. You will see two areas in the timeline when the envelope tool is selected. A light gray area and a bit of a darker gray area on top and bottom of that. The envelope tool will be a bit complex concept to go into detail for beginners, so I am skipping the details. The draw tool with a pencil-like icon is a more advanced feature. You cannot use the draw tool unless you zoom into a detailed waveform. You will find links to videos on these advanced concepts in the description. Back to the selection tool which is needed for most common tasks. For example, to delete something from the track, select the part by dragging and hit delete on the keyboard. You can undo the last change from this button or press Command-Z on Mac and Control-Z on Windows. 
You can copy-paste waveform the same way you do it in a document editor. Select the part you want to copy by dragging and then Command-C or Control-C to copy. To paste in a position, first click in there, Command-V or Control-V to paste. A significant thing to understand for better audio editing is the volume level. There are two meter toolbars here, one for tracking recording volume and another for tracking playback volume. You can drag and reposition any tool. These meter toolbar can also be expanded to see the numbers better. I will expand both tools to make the same length. There is a gain slider in the track that you can use to boost the volume of the track. Keep an eye on this playback meter to see how the volume increases with the gain slider. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. It has some advanced features, it has some very advanced features. But when you are new to audio editing and recording, Audacity has all the options to start with. And when you get some more knowledge or when you become more knowledgeable in audio editing and... Though gain slider is not the actual way to boost a piece of recording. So I will move back the gain slider at zero. The drawback of the gain slider is that the volume change is not reflected in the waveform. The waveform shape was the same as I moved the gain slider. It can have some issues with some audacity effects. There is a couple of effects to increase the volume level of a recording. I will explain in a minute what the effects do in audacity, but before that, I want to show you an example. To apply an effect, you have to choose the part of the recording where you want to apply the effect. I want to apply amplify effect across this track, so I will select everything by double-clicking the track. Notice the track background changed from gray to a bit white as I double-clicked. Click on Effect and choose Amplify. All these effects you see in the Effect menu either fix something in the audio or add something special to the audio. For an Audacity beginner, the first step is to learn how to record and how to apply effects to it. Every Audacity effect has its unique set of configurations. In the Amplify effect, you can see amplification input, a slider, and new peak amplitude input. In these meters, you may notice the maximum value is zero. That means the maximum loudness or the highest recording volume can be zero dB. This is the way to represent audio loudness in Audacity and most editing software. There is complex math behind this kind of loudness representation, but the main point is that the more negative a value is, the quieter the audio will be. So minus 12 dB will be quieter than minus 6 dB. The ideal value of the final output depends on the situation. For example, where you will use the audio or what kind of audio you are working with. As you are watching this video on YouTube, let's try to set a good volume level for voice on YouTube. A value around minus 6 will be okay. The word peak amplitude has a special meaning. It means the loudest point of the audio. So if I set minus 4.5 as peak amplitude, the loudest part of the audio will be minus 4.5 and every piece of audio will get an 8.3 dB amplification. If all these talks sound complex to you, watch this part of the video later after using Audacity a couple of times. If I click apply, these settings will be applied to the audio recording. You see the waveform shape has changed or amplified. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. It has some advanced features. It, it is possible to repeat or apply the effect with the same settings from the effect and then repeat. But I want to undo the effect. I can undo from edit, undo amplify, or I can do it from the history. When you go to history, you will see all the changes you made to the audio. Amplify was the last action here. So I can go above that action and click OK. The waveform is back again to its original form. There is another effect named normalize to adjust the volume. Normalization is the standard process of adjusting volume levels across different audio software. Let's say you want to upload this recording to YouTube. So normalization is the process of making the audio volume standard. As I said before, different effect has a different set of configurations. Keep the remove DC offset checked, though modern recording devices do not have this issue. Peak amplitude can be a maximum of zero, as we saw in the playback meter. If I set any positive value, the controls become inactive. For voice recording on YouTube, minus 5 is a good value to normalize. 
you can preview to hear six seconds of the audio with current settings. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. You can get back default settings from default presets. I will set the peak amplitude as minus 5 and apply the effect. Audacity is a really useful. You should notice some white noise after normalization. As normalization is volume control, it increases everything. As my voice increased, so did the noise. There are two things about this white noise. There is some part where we have only white noise. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. There are other parts where we have a voice recording, but the white noise is also noticeable. Our goal is to reduce this white noise so that it becomes unnoticeable. Audacity has an effect called noise reduction to do this job. First, you have to select a noise-only part from anywhere. I will select from the beginning. The main thing to consider about this noise selection is that this noise is present in other parts of the audio. Go to noise reduction effect. Noise reduction is a two-step process. Step 1 is to give Audacity the noise sample. Audacity will later remove noise matching this noise sample. Click on Get Noise Profile. Step 2 is the noise reduction process. Select the audio parts from where you want to remove that noise. I have that noise present all over the audio sample, so I will select everything by double-clicking. Go to Noise Reduction again. These three sliders control different aspects of noise reduction. For example, the noise reduction slider specifies how much noise you want to reduce. The higher the value, the more matching noise will be removed. But the irony is while it reduces noise, it can also degrade the actual recording. So you have to find the sweet spot where the noise is reduced, but the voice quality remains good. A value of 6 in all three fields works well for an ideal recording. The radio button residue gives you the option to hear what sound is getting reduced. Select the Reduce to reduce noise. You can preview it before applying the settings. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. As I had pretty strong white noise, I will try with a value of 12 for noise reduction. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. If you want to know details of an effect, Click the help icon. A details guide on the effect is available online and is good for advanced level learning. You will also find some tips on recommended settings. With some experience, you will find out which configurations work best for your scenario. I will apply this noise reduction setting. You can see the line become flat after applying the effect. It still has some noise but that is less than what I had last time. For voiceover on YouTube, little noise is not an issue as it cannot be heard obviously. But for voiceover work like audiobooks in ACX, you have to follow strong noise guidelines. For that kind of work, you have to set your recording environment in a way so that less noise gets into the recording. If you increase the height of the track, some noise will be visible. You can drag to increase the height of the track, or you can go to the view menu and click fit to height. There are different options to fit your track in the visible area. For example, you can fit to width to see everything on track. You can use the zoom toggle button to get back to the default width. Besides waveform, Audacity provides another option to see audio data through a spectrogram. Right-click on the track information panel and select spectrogram. The spectrogram shows how energy is distributed across frequencies. The brighter a spot, the more energy across that frequency. Some effects can be used to edit in spectrogram view, though it may not be very beginner friendly. As a beginner, you need to be comfortable with the waveform view first. You can get the waveform view back by checking the waveform option only. The track panel has some use cases of its own. For example, to select everything, I double clicked inside the track. It is also possible to select everything from the select button. Solo and mute buttons are for working with multiple tracks. When you have multiple tracks, 
The solo button will make only that track active and mute the other tracks. The mute button mutes the track. If you play while mute, no sound is outputted as expected. You can rename a track to a better name, which is especially handy while working with multiple tracks. It is very easy to forget or lose track of what kind of editing you have done so far. View history is an excellent place to get a reminder of your work so far. So I normalized to increase volume and then applied noise reduction. I have now got decent audio to share. So the question is, how do we share it? To get a shareable audio file, I have to export it from Audacity. There are several formats to export, such as MP3 or WAV etc. I prefer WAV, though it takes more disk space than MP3, because WAV is an uncompressed version where no audio data is lost. So WAV is a preferred format if you use this audio in another project, for example in video editing software. Set the location to save and give the file a name. Click save, and you can set some metadata about the file. This metadata is optional and I will keep these as it is. If I go to my saved location, I will see the audio file. I can play this file using standard audio playing software. Audacity is a really useful software for beginners. It has some advanced features, it has some very advanced features. You need to know some useful features of Audacity as a beginner. For example, to silence any part, select it and click the Silence Audio Selection button. This part is entirely silent and nothing will appear in the meter. The opposite of silence can be done. You can only keep a part and silence everything. Select the part you want to keep and click the Trim Audio Outside Selection button. You see everything else is gone except the selected part. I undo this by Command Z. Sometimes, you will need to split a track to rearrange some audio positions. Select the point where you want to split. You can press Command I or Control I to split, or you can go to Edit, Audio Clips and then Split. You can grab a clip when the hand icon appears and shift it. You can also trim the clips by placing the cursor on the clip edge. When it is ready to trim, the cursor icon will change to two arrows. Trimming is a non-destructive operation in Audacity. If you trim the audio and untrim later, you will get the audio back. You can also join multiple clips. Select the clips and go to Edit, Audio Clips, and Join. Once you learn basic audio recording and editing in Audacity, you should focus on learning different audio effects. You will see built-in audio effects in the Effect menu. Audacity 3.2 has a new feature named Real-Time Effects. To keep this video beginner-friendly, I skipped those features. You will get links in the description about these features, so check them when you are ready. The last thing I want to show you is how to open an existing audio file in Audacity. Of course, you can use File, Open, but there is a better way. You should import to open a file in Audacity. When you import only one file, it is not an issue. But when you have multiple files to work with, the import will keep them in the same Audacity windows. It will be added as a new track. With Open, another Audacity will open the track. So when you need to work with multiple tracks or combine multiple tracks, import is useful. After completing this tutorial, you may need to watch this again in practice. After that, check the other videos in the description to become a pro user of Audacity. Thanks for watching and happy learning!